In this video, we'll be talking about the types of granules in neutrophils. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. So neutrophils are the most abundant leukocyte in our body and they are the component of the innate immune system. They play a crucial role against the immunity uh, for bacteria. Neutrophils are phagocytotic and their level increases when you have a bacterial infection in your body. So neutrophils are the most abundant circulating nu uh, leukocytes in our body. They are much more abundant compared to other blood cells like basophil or eosinophils, etc. Now neutrophils do their function via specific granules in, present in their cytoplasm. And there are different types of granules present in the cytoplasm of neutrophil. This heterogeneity of the granule has greater biological significance which we would unravel in this video. So let's see the granules. So there are two most important category of granules. First is primary granules. They're also weirdly called as azurophilic granules. We'll know why. They contain most potent hydrolytic enzymes. Just to give you some example, like elastase, myeloperoxidase, etc. Then secondary or specific granules contain high level of iron binding protein such as lactoferrin. They have other enzymes which has very specific and defined function for, from an immune context. There are tertiary or gelatinase granule which contains the enzyme gelatinase and each of these granule contents are really important for innate immune response. So let's talk about the primary or azurophilic granules. They are the larger and the most numerous type uh, of granule among the granules present in the neutrophils. So you can see they stain bluish purple color when stained with lab dyes. That is why they are known as azurophilic. Then primary granules or azurophilic granule contains proteins which are toxic for microorganisms and they are they play the initial and non-specific response against any infection. The contents of the azurophilic granules are myeloperoxidase, then cathepsin G, protease 3, defensin, lysozymes, elastase and many more. We'll try to look at some of these components and try to understand how this works. For example, one of the most important component is myeloperoxidase enzyme. This helps in the process called respiratory burst. During the process of respiratory burst, oxygen is converted into superoxide radical by the help of enzyme NADPH oxidase. Then superoxide dismutase converted into hydrogen peroxide, which further gets converted to hydro, uh, uh, HOCl radical with the help of the enzyme myeloperoxidase. So myeloperoxidase is important to generate the reactive oxygen species. Now these reactive oxygen species would eventually kill the bacteria in various ways. That is why the contents of these granules are really important. Now elastase is an enzyme that has a various role in terms of immunity. Many bacteria has elastic components in their cell wall and capsules that can be broken down by this enzyme elastase. Also elastase helps in tissue remodeling. Now the now let's talk about the secondary or specific granules. All these granules are nicely categorized and described with the help of strenous electron microscopy studies or transmission electron microscopy studies. Now these are smaller in size compared to the primary granule and fewer in number as well. They contain protein and enzymes uh, with specific functions such as many of these uh, con contents of the secondary granule helps in chemotaxis, phagocytosis or might have antimicrobial activity. Now let's, I mean overall the goal is to fine tune the immune system. So let's look at some of these components such as lactoferrin, lysozymes, collagenase, etc. So, for example, lysozyme that breaks down peptidoglycan layer of the bacterial cell wall. NADPH oxidase, which is present in these um, granules, uh, produces superoxide radical. Now we looked at that superoxide radical or reactive oxygen species can kill the bacteria when neutrophil has engulfed it. Then lactoferrin has antimicrobial activity by sequestering free iron. So all of these are content of the uh, specific granule or the secondary granules. Now let's talk about another important category called gelatinase or tertiary granule, which has gelatinase enzyme, which can break down the matrix metalloprotein and they can overall remodel the extracellular matrix. So it is useful for tissue remodeling purposes. Another 
category of granule which is broadly defined but still debatable is the secretory granules. These secretory granules are something which is secreted by the neutrophils as the name suggests. Now these are secreted by activated neutrophils in response to an infection. Most, most of the components in these secretory granules are chemokines and cytokines. These are kind of like a backup signal that the neutrophils are telling the friends of their innate immune components to give backup because there is an in potential invasion. Let me take you to that scenario. So let's say there is a bacterial invasion, macrophages and the neutrophil would eventually be engaged with these bacteria. So macrophages secrete specific, specific components such as uh, CXCL8, neutrophil secrete components like CXCL12 or 14, all of these help in uh, the diabetes of many of the other uh, immune cell components such as more macrophages and more neutrophils. This help them to be recruited in the, into the site of infection. That is why these granules are super important. Now, defect in neutrophil granules can be associated with many disease. For example, alpha granule defect is associated uh, with many uh, many diseases, and most common. This is the most common neutrophil defect. The antimicrobial activity of the neutrophil is comp not totally compromised, but partially compromised because there is a defective HOCL radical production. This has been seen uh, with uh, amyotopic, uh, so this, this is seen with AML disease. Then there is Chediac Higashi syndrome, which is a, a genetic disorder where the list gene or lysosomal transport associated gene is uh, basically abrogated which lead to formation of abnormal giant alpha granules and uh, this has many other consequences. Also NADPH oxidase which was a component of the secondary granule is defective in chronic granulomatous disease or CJD which is again a X-linked recessive uh, dis disorder. In this case what happens the ability of the neutrophil to kill bacteria is compromised. So we understand if e any of these granules are defective then the neutrophil's ability to function is compromised. Now all of these granules are developed in different timelines. So it's important to understand the neutrophil maturation timeline and the appearance of these granules. So neutrophil matures like myeloblast to promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, band cells and eventually the mature neutrophil. All these granules are not present throughout the beginning. For example, primary or azurophilic granules are the first one to be present in these uh, neutrophils. It is roughly present from the myelocyte stage. Then the secondary granules are present from the metamyelocyte stage, whereas the tertiary granules are appearing at the later point when the band cells are eventually getting, get, getting to a mature neutrophil state. So all these granules are present in the body in different timelines. So just to summarize, we looked at two most important granule types in the neutrophil. Those are azurophilic granules or the primary granules whose contents majorly are myeloperoxidase, then cathepsin G, proteinase 3, lysozymes, etc. It's important to note that many of these uh, contents of these granules can be overlapping. We also looked at specific granules, we looked at gelatinase granules and secretory granules which has uh, alkaline phosphatase, many of these uh, chemokines, etc. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.